Which is better, Wes Craven's Scream or Blumhouse's Five Nights at Freddy's movie? This particular question had me puzzled for days, so I just had to make a video about it. Scream 1996 and Five Nights at Freddy's, two vastly similar but different movies, have the same actor, Matthew Lillard, who plays two different characters that changes the narrative in both movies altogether, Stu Mocker and William Afton. Some say that they are the same exact character. Personally, writing-wise, I think that Lillard plays the best and worst versions of both characters. Hi, I'm Film Phantom. I make various educational and interesting film content, and today I'm going to tell you why Scream 1996 worked, whereas Five Nights at Freddy's failed. Before we begin, I'm not hating on the FNAF movie, folks. I'm just critiquing the film for its flaws and misses. You can hate on this video all you want, more power to you, but I want to critique this film so that Blumhouse can improve on the sequel. With that discretion, let's examine Stu Mocker and William Afton for a minute. Both characters own or stay in a place that serves as a setting for the events to follow, with meanings of importance or significance. William owns Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria as a business owner, and Stewart lives in the Mocker house as a high school student of Woodsboro High. Personality-wise, Mocker is energetic and hyperactive, while Afton is a soft-spoken, cold-calculating sociopath with foul intentions. Both characters are complete opposites in terms of characterization. For starters, Five Nights, which is what I'm going to refer to it as FNAF, introduces us to Steve Raglan, a small career counselor who tries to get Mike Smith into more job opportunities. Besides introducing this mysterious character, we only see Afton interact with the character Mike Smith, which is odd because there isn't enough time to invest into Raglan or flesh out his character before the reveal, making Afton's characterization a little underwhelming. Lillard does have another scene speaking through the phone to Mike at his office, which is fine, but the scene feels out of character for general audiences who knows little of FNAF. Sure, Lillard's acting is great here, but his character is utilized to set up the plot and only talks to Mike out of all people. If you aren't familiar with FNAF lore, this scene can be confusing because Lillard is hiding more than we realize, raising questions as to why Lillard's character is behaving this way. Moreover, there isn't enough scenes for Lillard to shine through when it comes to social interactions. Honestly, I do think that Emma Tammy, the director, should have included many scenes to flesh out Afton's character as a red herring, interacting with some minor characters and engaging with the story. Limiting Lillard's scenes definitely diminishes Afton's reveal and true colors. In Wes Craven's Scream, Stuart Mock is a character who interacts with almost every single main character, building a personality and relationship dynamic while also serving as a red herring. He invites Sydney and Tatum to his party, another plot setup that manages to serve as a backdrop. Unlike William Afton, Stu Mocker has more information that tells us about his character, from his quirky attitude to his fun rooted nature, which gives us his insight into the possibility of peer pressure being the root cause. This reveal is convincing enough as it showcases Stu's changing character, as well as how his betrayal affects the rest of the characters. As a writer, this video, Beyond the Mask, a Scream YouTuber, is writing a book that takes place before the events of the first film. So we may learn a lot about Billy and Stu in this prequel. Knowing this information bats my eye because there are a lot of things missing that we haven't seen yet. I also wonder how this thing will change the course of the franchise with all of those wiki articles and pages made for any Ghostface, knowing their true intentions. Now back to William Afton. So there's this possibility that FNAF is setting up a planned trilogy, with establishing exposition and plot details under wraps, which is fine, but audiences don't know enough about Afton to form a consensus. We're only judging Afton based on his actions, unlike Stu who has a full blown personality. In comparison, both characters are not meant to feel sympathy with, as their actions are blamed on themselves. The FNAF movie fails in payoff in executing Afton. Afton's characterization is looked upon as a form of fan service rather than to entice or develop the character. In terms of plot, the character is rarely seen to do anything important up until the very end, only serving to help out the main character then question his validity. Yet, he rarely interacts with Vanessa, Aunt Jane, Abby, or any of the other Fazbear employees. The name Steve Raglan is reminiscent of the Silver Eyes comic. It also serves as an alibi. This in turn makes Afton very accurate to the source material, as it's shown in the novels and games. All in all, Afton's character serves as a plot device to advance major character arcs. Now regarding both films and their messages, the issue with the FNAF movie is that there's many plot points left unanswered or ignored throughout the movie's runtime. While Scream utilizes a simple story that ties loose ends and serves as a well-established, character-driven solo horror movie. While Five Nights tries to mimic the lore of the missing children's incident with a sense of supernatural elements in the dream sequences, it runs into problems with its narrative, shifting the tone of the film halfway through and creating plot holes. The scene where Mike is attacked by Foxy's ghost is never brought up again, as that plot hole is ignored while the mysterious death of Aunt Jane is resolved with zero explanation or effort. The plot and story feel rushed with little payoff in the end. 
Abby's character tends to change with her attitude coming and going when she acts out selfishly to Mike. Okay, I get it. While it's justified for Abby to act this way without any mother or father figures in her life, there shouldn't be a reason for Abby to despise Mike throughout this movie, since Mike is trying to provide for her and give her a good education. Scream's plot and story is addressed as a whodunit as the plot and action stays relevant to its time, but FNAF is slower, trying to engage with the supernatural elements that make up the game franchise. The FNAF movie's writing feels weak with some inconsistencies. Keep in mind that Matthew Lillard has signed on to a three-picture trilogy, so the loose ends are necessary for developing a second film, let alone the third. At some point, the pacing in the FNAF movie persists, leaving the viewer dissatisfied unless you're a fan. The characters in Scream are more resilient and crucial to the third act. Everyone serves a purpose here which entices the plot, writing, and story needed to create a great film. While Vanessa and Abby are fundamental to the story of Freddy's, their involvement is affected by the story when Michael easily could have found out about the missing children's incident. In my opinion, I do think that Scream addresses childhood trauma in an emotional setting very well. Considering how both films showcase how vulnerable people can be to manipulate and lower their self-esteem. The theme of betrayal in both final acts are strikingly similar, however, with the sudden realization of Sydney and Mike's faces as they face their monsters or monster that have done irreversible damage to their families. Unfortunately for FNAF, Scream has the upper advantage when it comes to betrayals as it felt personal for Sydney as she is willing to trust Stu with her life and they were best friends, while William Afton felt like a complete stranger. In addition to emotion, the FNAF movie lacks William's complex motivation to enact his spree, making his villainous character a little scarier compared to Billy Loomis. Unlike Billy, Afton's motivations are very random, making the viewer feel confused and ultimately unsatisfied. Blumhouse's Five Nights at Freddy's movie forgets to establish a message until it remembers to at the very end. The themes and messages conveyed in Freddy's lie deep within kids' drawings and doodles, linked with the innocence of the missing children. Both Scream and FNAF build on trauma, but Scream does a better job of establishing proper closure. When we look at the dream sequences, we're really only focused on Mike, although sometimes the missing children do have a bit of development within the leader, Golden Freddy. Humanizing Afton's victims further establishes the importance of seeking proper justice and closure, but almost all of the characters don't exactly get any kind of closure. When Afton is defeated, the ghosts of the missing children haven't received any proper closure, knowing that their families do not know whatever happened to them and forever losing their entire livelihoods to a sadistic psycho. Childhood trauma is a big thing in the FNAF games, but the FNAF movie doesn't build enough exposition to feel bad for these characters. The movie is depressing enough, but the tone changes midway through that it loses control of what makes the film scarier. Both films have fantastic opening scenes, setting up the tone of the film, effectively grasping the viewer's perception of what to expect from the slow ambiance of horror and the way these scenes build up dreadfulness to the aftermath in the death scene. It's no secret that these two openings work as its own separate fan film. The only difference is the setup, character, and execution. In Scream, the camera is shot in the perspective of Casey. We know a lot about her, which makes her death at the hands of Ghostface very saddening. For establishing the pizzeria, FNAF delves into the Night Guard's troubles and experiences. Besides a few grunts and shivering down his spine, the Night Guard doesn't exactly have much personality, meaning that he could have easily been a random person and we don't exactly feel for him, although his cries for help do give a lot more empathy. But the scenes don't exactly work in establishing a character that you get to love. The FNAF movie should have been a lot longer. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed watching the FNAF movie, but there's so much inconsistencies and plot details that feel underdeveloped. If the film added 5 or 10 minutes of screen time to Afton, the film could have been a lot better, and it should have added a lot more exposition into Mike and Vanessa, effectively tying their character arcs together and serving a satisfying ending. Here's what should have changed. In a separate scene, have Afton talk to a few people before going into talking to Aunt Jane privately about Mike's job at Freddy's. Think of it as a last resort, if you will. Give Afton a reason to tag along with Jane's plan, albeit he opens up Freddy's after a court settlement leaves him with money and he frames Mike with a crime he might have committed. Jane would want to know more about Mike's past jobs, so she heads to the career counselor with Doug. Unbeknownst that she is talking to a bad man, Afton could have showcased Mike's past history with violence, and he will also call up Jeff and his gang as a friend of Jane's into trashing the place, with then betraying them into controlling the animatronics. That way, Afton gets what he wants by manipulation. By including these scenes, the film could easily go into a different direction, subverting audiences' expectations altogether and binding two subplots into one. Scream utilizes this by connecting separate subplots plots that join together. An example of this is when Dewey and Gail's romance subplot leads to Neil's Prescott's car, while Randy's movie rant at the living room elaborates his jokey movie level-headed self in the third act, unaware of the events happening to his friend group while being drunk. 
vividly surprising himself after Billy taps him in the shoulder. One may say that the whole FNAF movie is all about Mike, Vanessa, and Abby, which honestly could be absolutely correct. But unfortunately, besides Mike, none of the other characters have any backstory scenes. I know that there's a small glimpse of it in Vanessa's scenes, but it doesn't exactly delve further into their childhood or history with past night guards. Scream does have pre-existent backstory, however, but it's shown in the dialogue. Gail and Sydney have some history, especially since they receive Cotton Weary showcased in the TV. There's also hints of news broadcasts that showcase Miriam Prescott's Unalive, with an incident that happened one year prior. This scene could have been easily showcased in Freddy's with a VHS tape that could have showcased a lot more backstory on the, on the missing children's incident. Establishing the fact that this news broadcast could have at least drawn attention to Freddy's, but nothing ever really was resolved, leaving many people unaware of the events happening. There also could have been a lot more scenes with Vanessa talking to her dad before we then cut to more grown up Vanessa while she enrolls in the police force giving her a reason for why she acts this way, especially since she, she basically hands Mike a warning about bringing Abby closer to the animatronics. Knowing this however, it does make me think about the original draft and how much could have changed regarding post production. There could have been a lot more with Vanessa especially since we could have played into her backstory and known more about Afton. But unfortunately, the movie doesn't delve deep into what Afton could have done prior to the events of the missing children's incident. In Scream, however, we do see a lot more into what Billy and Stu could have done, although it's not explicitly established up until the third movie, which does leave a bit more confliction. The more I think about it, the more I think that FNAF has a lot more problems. Though it doesn't say that this is a bad movie. Sure, it has some flaws, but there's not a whole lot to do since it didn't miss the mark, which meant that it, there could have been a lot more setup that we haven't seen. To conclude, FNAF and Scream are remarkably similar but different in many ways. These distinctions leave a mark on both movies. For better or for worse is begging the question. But what do you think about the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and Scream? Do you think that one is better than the other? Tell me in the comments below and goodbye.